Hello, hello, I'm Daniel. Welcome back to the first video in which we will write some actual code. We're going to be talking about the most basic building blocks of Scala. We're going to talk about values and types and also variables. All right, so I'm here in my dev environment with the Scala project that we created earlier. Now, in every lecture starting from now on, I'll be creating a new Scala application and we will write and test code plus do some practice exercises in each application. All right, so for this lecture, I'm going to go and create a uh, new Scala application, but first I'm going to create a new package. So I'm going to right click on the lectures package and I'm going to click on package. I'm going to call this part one basics. Okay, now in this lectures dot part one basics package, I'm going to right click here. I'm going to create a new Scala class. I'm going to call this values, variables, types and I'm going to make this an object instead of a class. We're going to talk about objects in section two when we talk about object oriented programming, but for now, just don't worry about it. I uh, select this object uh, in the drop down here and click OK. Now, after the object vario values, variables and types that you created, add at the end extends app. The way that we did with the Scala Playground toy app that we created in uh, a previous video. All right, so don't worry about the object and extends app things. We'll get in the, into those in due time, but basically this is what we need to be able to run this code in the IDE. So uh, if I right click, I'm going to have this run option uh, available in the context menu. All right, so I've entered presentation mode in IntelliJ and without any further ado, let's create a value. So the syntax is val. V A L, then a name, let's call this X for simplicity, then a colon, notice this one, and a type, I'm going to use int for uh, this example, int is a simple integer, then an equals, and then the value of X, say 42. Now, to print this to the console, I'm going to use the print line function, which is print ln. So if I print line X, and if I right click and run, we're, we're going to see 42 in the console. Okay, so pretty simple. Cool, so that's the syntax for declaring a val. Pretty straightforward. Now, a new thing that I wanted to show you, so new things already. Watch this. If I try to give a new value to x, say x equals 2, this will upset the compiler. It says, if I hover, it says reassignment to val. So this is the first takeaway from this lecture. Vals, the things that you declare with the keyword val, cannot be reassigned. Once they have a value, they're set in stone. That is to say, that I'm going to write this in all caps, vowels are immutable. Vowels act in a similar way to constants or finals in Java or C, although they serve a different purpose. That is, vowels aren't really regarded as constants to be reused in various parts of the code, but more like intermediate computations to later use in bigger computations. Now, the Scala way and the functional programming way of thinking in general involves working with such vowels. You'll get more familiar with this style as we go through the course. Okay, so let's delete this little token here because it's not allowed. So keep in mind that vowels are immutable. All right. Now, next lesson. Watch what I'm doing. So I'm selecting the type of x, like we said, colon int, and I'm going to delete it. So as you see, nobody seems to complain. And if I right click and run, the code will run and still print 42. Okay, so another piece of news, the types of vowels are optional. That's because the compiler can infer the type of, in this case, X from the right hand side. It looks at the value 42 and the compiler figures out that 42 is an int, so X must be an int. So if I hover over int, you will see that X is an int and that was inferred by the compiler already without needing me to specify it explicitly. So keep in mind that compiler can infer types. Now, in practice, we don't usually mention types explicitly for values and later variables, as the compiler is smart enough to figure types for us. Now, if you do mention the type, and if you say call an int, make sure the right hand side conforms to that type, because otherwise the compiler will complain. For example, if I use a string, which is um, a, a piece of text in between double quotes and says hello Scala, now the compiler complains because it says expression of type string does not conform to expected type int. So you basically say that x is an int, but you give it a value of type string on the right hand side. So the compiler is confused. All right, so let's undo this. 
I'm going to give x the value 42 back. Okay. Now, speaking of strings that we saw earlier, let's use some other types. Okay. So if I declare a value of type string, so I'm declaring a val, called it a string. The type is string with a capital S and uh, values of type strings are pieces of text in between double quotes. So if I say hello, this is a string. Okay, so nothing too spectacular. You probably knew about strings already. Now, before we move on to other types, a small detour. So I'll put a semicolon here just so you know that semicolons are allowed in Scala like uh, you've probably seen in Java or C or C++, but they're not really necessary in Scala as we write each expression on its own line. Semicolons are necessary if you write multiple expressions on the same line, but this is usually bad style. So if I say val another string, which is goodbye. Now the semicolon is mandatory because it separates the expression. Again, this is discouraged. So instead I'm going to delete the semicolon and put each expression on its own line. This is the recommended Scala style. All right, back from detour. Let's get acquainted with the basic types in Scala. You've used them before in other languages for sure, but I just want to walk you through them in Scala. Okay, first of all, the Boolean type. Okay, this is a Boolean, a Boolean, with the type Boolean with a capital B, and the values for Booleans are the keywords true or false. Okay, they are keywords, that is, you can't name things with um, true or false. Okay, uh, characters are denoted by the type car with the capital C and character va values are single characters in between single quotes so say the character A okay now ints you've seen them before um, with the type int and you can give them the values of other vowels say x okay there are also other uh, integer numerical values uh, shorts and longs uh, let's give them an example here. So if I say a short with the type short with a capital S and I'm going to give this a value of let's say uh, 4613. If I uh, put in uh, too big of a number, Scala will complain and it says expression of type int does not conform to expect type short because short is uh, int with half the representation size, so it's represented on two bytes instead of four. The compiler will complain if the number is too big. All right. Also, longs with a type long with a capital L, and uh, longs are also integer types, but with double the representation, they're represented on eight bytes instead of four. And you can put in a numerical um, value here, but again, if the number is too big for type int, Scala will complain that integer number is out of range for type int. So to mark that this is actually a number and it should be represented as a long, you put in a capital L here at the end. This is similar to the uh, Java syntax for longs. Finally, we have decimal values. So we have floats with a capital F. And these are decimal values like 2.0F. Notice this little F at the end. This, is, this marks to the compiler that this is a float number. If you delete the F, the compiler will say that this number is actually a double, not a float. So let's introduce doubles. Uh, double with the type double, with a capital D, of course, and you can write simple numerical uh, decimal values uh, without any markers at the end. This is by default the double representation in Scala. Again, this is consistent with the Java syntax as well. All right, so these are the basic types. I'm not going to bore you too much with them. All right, I'm going to introduce the concept of variables in Scala. They are defined by the keyword var, V-A-R. So if I say a variable, this is defining a variable. Let's give it also a type of int and with a capital I of course, and let's give it a value of say four. Now the thing with variables instead of values is that they can be reassigned. So if I say a variable equals five, now the compiler will not complain because this is a var, not a val. 
Now, variables are used for what in functional programming we know as side effects. Side effects are useful because they allow us to see what our programs are doing. Uh, examples of side effects are, for example, changing a variable like here, or printing something to the console, or displaying something on screen. Programs without side effects are easier to understand as we will see in this course, because there are no variables and logic to keep track of. However, we cannot really eliminate side effects completely because we need our programs to do something to the world. We'll just need to be mindful of side effects from now on. And I'll discuss more cases of side effects, of dangers of side effects, uh, as we go through the course. Alright, so in this video you've learned about values and how to declare them, as in val name colon type equals something on the right hand side. You've learned that values cannot be reassigned, that is they are immutable. By contrast, variables can be reassigned, we say that they are mutable. Now, functional programming involves working less with variables, so we'll start thinking more in terms of vowels rather than vars, and you'll learn this style of thinking along the way. All right? You've also uh, seen that vowels and vars have types, and the types can be inferred by the compiler, which is pretty cool. From now on, we'll use the compiler to determine the type of things. You've also learned the basic types in Skull and how to use them. You've seen booleans, you've seen numerical values, and you've also seen characters and strings. Alright, I'm Daniel, some good stuff coming, I'm really excited, and I'm waiting for you in the next video.